here is an icosahedron. It's got 12 vertices, 30 edges, and 20 triangular faces. Now, I want to color the edges of this icosahedron. Now, I can color them however I like, but here's the rules that I want. I want to use three colors, and on each triangular face, I want each of those three colors to appear. Let's see if this is possible. Well, here are the 12 vertices and the 30 edges, and we can count out the 20 triangular faces. Now, I flattened it out so that we can actually reason about the icosahedron you know, a little bit more easily. And we can see that each of the faces is a triangle. Around each vertex, uh, like this yellow vertex, there are five faces. And here's another vertex with, with its five neighbors. Every single vertex looks the same. Now, we want to color each edge with one of three colors, with red or with green or with blue, so that each triangular face uses all three colors. So let's pick a vertex and look at the five edges touching it. Two of the neighboring edges can't be the same color because then that triangular face wouldn't use all three colors. Can we get away with just two colors at a vertex? Well, if we use just two colors, then we end up with a duplicate color on some neighboring edges. So we're guaranteed to see all three colors around each vertex. So in particular, there are three colors in the five edges around this vertex. So one color, well, let's suppose it's red, appears just once. Its neighbors have to be different colors. And that tells us how to color all the edges around the marked vertex. And that then tells us how to color all the faces around that vertex. Well, let's look at how these five triangles got colored. We'll, we'll rotate to put the red edge on the bottom in, in each case. So here's the, the five triangles I'm just pulling out here and lining them up vertically. Now, we have the red edge on the bottom, and the first four have the blue edge on the left-hand side and their green edge on the right-hand side. So we'll mark these first four as positively oriented or counterclockwise orientation, and the fifth triangle is oriented the opposite way. It's oriented clockwise. I've drawn a little circular arrow inside each of these triangles so that when I read the edges in the direction marked by the circular arrow, that I read red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue, on and on and on like that. This pattern is forced upon us at every single vertex. Four of the five triangles at each vertex are oriented one way with a so-called minority triangle, which is oriented the opposite way. Now, we can use this pattern to work out our desired three coloring of an icosahedron. Let's pick a vertex to focus on. Of its five neighboring faces, two are oriented in opposite directions. Okay, so let's remember where we are. We're going to bifurcate on a couple different possibilities here. So here's one possibility. One possibility is that the other three faces are oriented clockwise. Let's just suppose that that happens and we'll follow where it leads. Now, we're going to focus on this vertex. Of its three neighbors, we've already oriented. Two are counterclockwise and one is clockwise, so the other two must also be counterclockwise. Let's focus on this vertex. It also touches three faces that we've already oriented. Two of them clockwise, one counterclockwise, so the other two must be oriented clockwise. We'll focus on another vertex touching three previously oriented faces. Each vertex touches a single minority triangle, so the other two faces must also be oriented clockwise. Here's another vertex with three previously oriented faces, exactly one of those being oriented clockwise, so the others must be counterclockwise. Well, that forces this edge to be green, but that is a problem. We can't have two green edges in a single face. We failed, so let's undo what we did and make the opposite choice way back at the beginning when we bifurcated. Here we are at the beginning again. Now, instead of orienting these three faces clockwise, let's make the opposite choice. Let's orient these faces counterclockwise, making the clockwise face the minority triangle at this vertex. Now, let's work around this vertex. We must orient these two faces counterclockwise. Now let's look around this vertex. Now here it seems we've got a choice. We've got three previously oriented faces that are positively oriented. So the remaining two must be one of each. One of them has to be clockwise, one of them has to be counterclockwise. 
but by symmetry, it doesn't matter which one we choose. So we'll just fill them in either way. We'll put one of them counterclockwise, one of them will be clockwise. Now we can proceed as we usually do. So around this vertex, the other two must be counterclockwise. Around this vertex, the other two must be counterclockwise. And around this vertex, everything so far is counterclockwise, so the remaining face must be clockwise. And around this vertex, there are three counterclockwise and one clockwise, so the remaining must be counterclockwise. And around this vertex, all four are counterclockwise, so the last face must be clockwise. And we've done it. I mean, we didn't even really have a choice about it. We could permute the colors or reflect this pattern, but this is essentially a unique three coloring of the edges of an icosahedron so that around each face, all three colors appear. Now let's take a look at this in 3D. Well, here it is, our three colored icosahedron. Now what's cool is that I could take all the red edges and expand them slightly. I can take all the blue edges and shrink them slightly. And then what I've got is an icosahedron built out of 20 congruent triangles, congruent scalene triangles. It's a scalene icosahedron.